A lot of people emphasize to get your application done early, having it most complete as possible is more important than early because we'll get these unfinished applications. Your letter of recs are still missing. We have so many applications. I can't go in and recheck to see if it got sent in. So if it's incomplete, that's how I'm going to see it. jump in and you can tell us a little bit about your story and oh my story how you, how you became a PA yeah I was a biology major I'm from uh, Chicago area and um, I was always interested in medical missions actually so I did a lot I traveled all over the world Panama Mexico wow. uh, Argentina Brazil uh, a lot of South America Vietnam Philippines Thailand that was like my passion. I wasn't really interested in medicine. I just wanted to help people. So I thought at one point that medicine was a very practical way. I'm just like a total guy. I just think very, very practically. Yeah. And then I heard about a profession from my cousin or something like that, because it wasn't super, super well known even then. And then I applied, got in, I uh, did my school in Savannah, Georgia. I worked a year and a half in the ER in emergency medicine in rural Illinois. I had like a existential crisis. So I moved to Mexico, lived there for about a year, I worked at a migrant farm village, learned some Spanish, treated some kids out of the church. And then I had some friends out in California and I'm like, I'm young and single. I have a disposable income now, so why not move to California? So I moved out here probably seven, eight years ago, something like that. And I've been working in emergency medicine. And after the pandemic, like many people, we had this, another existential crisis. I guess I, I get two, maybe two yeah. in my life. <laughs> I decided that I wanted to go back to my roots and maybe start a PA program in Thailand. I'm not Thai. I don't speak Thai or anything like that. But we went to these rural villages up in the mountains where they didn't speak Thai. They had no access or very little access to any sort of care. But we went with a team and did a lot of OB care there. And they took a portable ultrasound, did all the ultrasound for the ladies and moms there. And I was thinking, how can I help people? I'm not a researcher. I'm not a government official. What am I? I'm a PA. And you know, what, why were we created to help increase the access to healthcare? Could we create a PA program in another country like Thailand? What's the easiest way to do that? The most logical way is to get into education. I wrote a book. Uh, before that, I have no idea why. I just try random things. My wife edited it, actually. How to get into PA school and beyond. The director happened to read that, and she might be one of two people that read that. And then I got into the education profession. So for the past two and a half years, I've been teaching GI. I've been a clinical coordinator, obviously teaching emergency medicine. My program, an HBCU, which is for your audience that doesn't know what that is, historically Black College and University. And we're also a Hispanic serving institution. We have a lot of minorities in our program, which I really loved, especially after 2020 and uh, all the things that happened. I wanted to increase diversity and access to healthcare. Same values I've always had, just a different population. Yeah. Honestly, I really love it. I really love it. I'm glad you know, no one's ever dying in the <laughs> So that's always nice. So the stress. Not, not literally, but maybe emotionally. <laughs> maybe emotionally during yeah. baseball. Um, so that's how I got into education and how I'm in education right now. Are you full-time education or part-time clinical? Full-time there. I might work at the hospital maybe once or twice a month. Okay. Uh, not too often. Just to keep my skills up. Yeah. yeah cool. Okay. We have a lot to unpack there because you've been all over and done a lot. First, I want to talk about missions and international medicine because there are mixed opinions about that. I have a little experience, not nearly as extensive as yours. And I feel like I've seen both good and bad ways it's done and all of that. But from a student perspective, so a pre-PA student who is looking to go to PA school or a PA student who's very interested in that, what are your thoughts? Are international focused medical missions a good thing to pursue or what are some red flags there? I think overall how the Western world has done these kind of missions is very paternalistic. So we'll go into a country for two weeks. We'll feel good about ourselves. 
and then disrupt their economy, disrupt their healthcare system, and there's nothing sustainable, which is really not good. And even the year that I was in Mexico, you could call it long term, but honestly, a year is really nothing to get started. And you just need public health initiatives. So if you work with a government official there or people that actually have boots on the ground in the country and you're assisting them, I think that's totally okay. And for pre-PAs, I highly recommend it. When I'm looking through ad applications, I like to see what we call cross-cultural competency. They're, yeah. They know how to deal with people that aren't like them, don't have the same political beliefs as them or look like them or speak the same language. How do you do that? So I think like more worldly, well-traveled you are, I think those are really great experiences. Yeah. And I agree. I did some experiences in college and in PA school and then afterwards as a PA. And for me, especially after I'd been a PA for a little bit yeah, and you start to get a little jaded um, <laughs> working in America and sometimes you feel like you're just a customer service person. Yeah out into Kenya and it was just really great to be reminded that patients are the same everywhere, have all the same problems, but that was an organization that like you were saying, had really great just public health initiatives and came in, spent a lot of time in the community to help them get set up with what they needed to have a functioning hospital and basically brought us in to learn from their doctors and then teach dermatology and then their goal was eventually to leave and help this community just be set up on their own. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that's hard to research in the head of time, but there are some really good organizations out there too. There are. Not a bad yeah. one. There yeah. are some good ones. There are some good ones. There are some not good ones. <laughs> so yeah, it's tough. But I think overall, like it is a good experience. Like you said, gives you good perspective. We connected about a year ago. You reached out with the EDGE program that you started. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the background? Yeah, EDGE was the idea of my program director, Dr. Lucy Kibe. She and I had a conversation. We're like, Black males, we have trouble as an HBCU getting them. Everyone has probably a much harder time finding these Black males. We'll have maybe four in our class of 26, but... There's so many that apply that fall through the cracks. How do we, can we create a pipeline pro project for that? So with like very little money or funding and then just a lot of elbow grease on our part, we contacted some social media companies and some Instagram handles and the National Society of Black PAs, the Physicians Assistants of Color, yeah. grassroots, very grassroots. And we reached out to these students, the pre-PAs, Many of them have applied one or two or three times already. And we had 12 applicants apply. They didn't know what it was. They're like, do we pay for this thing? No, it's not, <laughs> nothing that they pay for. In fact, we pay for a lot of their things. CASPA, like it can be pretty expensive. So we covered a lot of those. We were like a resource center. Essay writing help. I did one-on-one -on -one. I looked through their CASPA application, advise improvement. They had mentors and we did mock interviews, which PA platform really helped. I that, yeah. I appreciated that. Out of the 12, nine applied to different programs and eight got into programs. Nice. Um, nine got interviews and eight yeah. got into Morehouse, Kansas State University, Ithaca College. A couple of them got into our program. I know someone got into their USC, University of Southern California PA platform really helped. I yeah. appreciated that. Honestly, I don't know if you knew this, but eight out of those nine guys, you interviewed a lot of them, mock interviewed, they got in. So thank you for that. Nice. Yeah, I know. That's great. I think one of the hardest parts about applying to PA school or even just wanting to be a PA is navigating the application process and not having anyone who's done it and not having maybe even an advisor who can help you or somebody in your family. It's hard to know where to go for help. And so I think that's really cool that y'all were able to streamline it and help direct students. And so I remember a study came out that basically said the PA profession is becoming less diverse. Yeah. Um, of the data right now yeah uh, and it just was very strange like why is that I have my thoughts and looking at the data I would have to pull the paper back up but yeah. I feel like part of the problem is people don't know about the PA profession until it's quote too late 
And because of the way the application process is set up, it can be very discriminatory to anybody who maybe had a rough semester or yeah. didn't figure things out quite quick enough. Then <laughs> there's the expectation of getting experience, but the jobs don't pay very well. Yeah. How do you live? Yeah, it's just so much. So yeah. what are your thoughts on our profession? And clearly, like, you're trying to help, but, like, what issues do we have? We have a lot of issues, but what issues do we have? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. Yeah. PA schools generally make a lot of money for institutions. And our program, we get 2,500 applicants every year for 26 seats. And that's most PA programs. So it's the moneymaker and how that is, how we're governed is our PA and stuff. And they want to see pants scores. And that's like the main success for a PA program to be accredited and get funding and get on the U.S. world news ranking and stuff like that. But when you look at what is a successful PA, it's an empathetic person. It's someone who can speak to all different kinds of people. It's people who look out, be advocates, but those are non-measurables. And I'm sure you could someday, but we don't have those measurables of success. So I think our whole view of success is just way off. I would say there's not enough emphasis on diversity and reaching out to rural areas and also family practice. A lot of PAs won't go to family practice because the money, and that is like a, a whole global economic issue that is way beyond just the PA profession. That's just the privatization of, of healthcare. So that's not nothing that... I'm willing to touch right now, but I can do whatever is in my capabilities, which is in increasing the diversity of the PA profession. Yeah, I think schools are trying to do a better job of that. I've found in the past probably year to two years, talking to high schoolers and getting a lot more interest in messages and emails from high schoolers than I ever have which I think is a good step for the profession because yeah. that I'm hoping there's more of a shift to people actively pursuing the PA profession and not finding it later. I'd always talk to pre-PA clubs, but at that point it's a little different. So then when I realized high schoolers were interested, I was like, okay, we need to talk to like high school pre-health groups. Right. And that's who we need to be just telling about the profession so right. that they know that it's an option. And PA is a pretty good profession, especially when you look at it. The debt to income ratio is really good for our profession. It doesn't feel like it, but... It doesn't <laughs> feel like it, but you go to school for two years and you come out and you are... Your salary. Doing good. Yeah, it's true. very different than med school where you're signing your life away for seven to 10 years or whatever. So... For sure. Are y'all still doing the EDGE program? Is it happening... It's happening right now. I forgot to mention that I've been just cold calling and meeting a ton of programs and we're securing an interview spot as long as those students meet the minimum criteria. I'm like, look out for these students. You're not guaranteeing a seat, but just at least an interview. So if they apply there, they will have a higher chance of getting an interview at least to yeah. increase their diversity. And a lot of programs across the country have agreed. I have like maybe 20 to 25 schools. Yeah, right yeah. Now. I wonder why the PA profession still is very female heavy also. I guess I thought that would shift over the years. It really hasn't. It's just very uh, interesting. still like that. I'm not 100% yeah. sure why. Uh, it might be just like we don't have enough male PA, PR, or something like that. I'm That's no what, yeah, I know my admissions director made a statement when I was in school and helping with interviews that she said that they would love to have more guys in the program, but the males that were applying were not qualified. Girls tend to test higher. And really? I have a belief that women are smarter than men. <laughs> so. I thought that was interesting because I think in med school, it recently shifted to where there's more female applicants now for med school than there are males, which is interesting too. I did read some sort of data that says women are much more educated now than they ever were. And they're actually eclipsing men. So the women that have a bachelor's degree at least and higher is higher than men right now. That's so interesting. Get in the data weeds and 
try yeah, to figure yeah. out it. I want to know why. I want to understand because then we'll know how to fix it. So the EDGE program is already happening for this cycle. So if somebody was interested and they're like, hey, I am a black male. I need help. Please help me. Yeah. Where like next year would they look? Would they for information? Yeah, I sent a link to our website. Okay, I'll put that in the description for everybody. We open up every spring and 20 is about the max that we can handle. If they're about to graduate or they graduated already, those are the students that we're looking for. Like people applying. Yeah, with they're going to apply or they're like a semester away from like just finishing up a couple courses or something like mm -hmm. that. So those are the students we're looking for. Is this an initiative that you see other schools possibly getting involved with or helping with or has anybody shown interest at all? Yeah, I've been speaking <laughs> with uh, Dr. Donna Murray. She's at PAEA. She's been cool. helping me out a ton with this, but we're looking to package this because it doesn't cost very much money, it's, you know, yeah. some, uh, effort. And then could you do this if you were from the University of Washington, where there's a high indigenous population, could you? shoot for there or if you're in like new mexico let's look for hispanic or latinx like male or female students or something like that or whatever a marginalized or like underrepresented group you can target and and really focus on for your like pipeline admission so yeah very easily doable cool well, hopefully this will maybe get to some faculty who are interested too <laughs> yeah um, that'd be cool so i want to talk a little bit about what have you seen with students that you feel like makes them successful mm. and do well in PA school? Or on the flip side, what do they struggle with from your uh, perspective? The data says that if you have a good science GPA, there's some correlation with your pants or board success rate. That and I've seen some articles saying that anatomy and physiology, if you did pretty well during undergrad, you have a good chance of doing well in your boards as well, which makes sense. Applicants that get in depends on the program. So you look at the missional goals. So for our program, a lot of it is social justice and caring for underserved and having the desire for that. We look for that in the interview and also the application, and we can weed out a lot of people that just use buzzwords. Those are the students that we look for, and we want students to pass and do well. We don't want to bring someone in just for the sake of diversity, and then they don't do well in the program. Science GPA is something that most programs highly emphasize, and a lot of schools are going away from the GRE because it's not, it's, there's no correlation. Yeah. That's great, right. and uh, yeah, it's, it's just the standardized test that may or may not have anything to do with how well you'll do in PA school. Yeah, it's fairly useless, in my humble opinion. Yeah. I've seen that also that the science GPA correlates and then I could see anatomy and physiology being big correlation there. I think also what is hard for students sometimes is just the transition and expectations going into PA school. Yeah. Can be tough. It's so hard to explain to somebody what to expect ahead of time. Is there one part of the application that you feel is the most important part or is it more holistic like really looking at everything it depends on the program a lot of people emphasize to get your application done early having it most complete as possible is more important than early because we'll get these unfinished applications your letter of recs are still missing i'll export the data we have so many applications i can't go in and recheck to see if it got sent in so if it's incomplete that's how i'm going to see it so don't send in your applications missing one or two things just for the sake of getting it done already. I'm going to cut that part and put it in five times. Yeah, yeah, that's important. People can hear it over and over because that's a lot of the questions I'm getting right now is like, should I submit? There's value in a complete application. A lot of times I feel like a week or two isn't going to make a difference in the long run, whereas a complete application would. Yeah, it would disqualify you sometimes. Thinking about where our profession's going are you still looking at pursuing starting an international PA program they had PAs in Kenya which was so interesting oh, interesting I didn't know that yeah it was great and they functioned very much like we did working uh -huh. with a physician in some capacity but had yeah. their own training and own education so it was really cool I didn't actually even know they had PAs until I got there but yeah they have PAs so 
is that something you're still thinking about or just seeing what happens here and who knows? I'm pretty content where I am here yeah. <laughs> so in the future. I haven't really thought about that because I'm just so busy, but yeah, maybe in the future. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see internationally where they pick up PAs. I've talked to a couple of UK PAs Yeah, and it's a little different. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They are not compensated very well. And then I think New Zealand has some PAs. I've never talked to a New Zealand PA. I heard that Canada, New Zealand. New yeah. Canada, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see see what happens with that. I appreciate your time and sharing all of your experience and about your program and we'll definitely get the word out. Mm-hmm.